Hello McWarriors, how's it going? And welcome to another episode of Rogue Tech. Guys, it is time that we're gonna continue building our Stalker. We're also gonna upgrade our Argo a little bit today, and of course we will be playing some missions. So, I'd say we're gonna dive into the game directly. We're gonna dive into the mission directly, because finances look good, ship upgrade is gonna be done, we gotta get out of fatigue, so it will take some time. However, uh, after like four days here, we can get into the next fight, and this is where I wanna go. Also, um, I'm really wondering if I should actually keep a bit of money. Maybe an Argo upgrade is not really due right now. I definitely want the third mech bay, that's a thing. Um, at the same time, it costs a million C bills, 1.3 million. Currently, we have 900,000 upkeep and a 1.7 mil million C bill balance. So I don't know if that's a good idea right now. I also want the drop size at some point. So my priorities right now are mech bay number three and then directly to the dropship. So for that, we need money. And because of that, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can find some missions. I definitely want to play some two skull missions today. And ideally, we're gonna try to find some enemies in clan territory. Now, this is just planetary government and the Valkyrie. One and a half skull? Nope, just government. Let me quickly check it out. Do we have any clans? That's a clan wolf battle. You know what? We're gonna take it and we're gonna farm XL clan engines in order to get a good chunk of money out of this here. So, morph one day. And then we're gonna dive into the first mission. And ideally, we can play two today. So let's check it out. Uh, it's gonna be this here, Polar Environment, Clan Wolf is our enemy. We're gonna take maximum salvage. And on top of it, we also get 300,000 sea builds out of it. It's gonna be really good. So, in terms of max, we have our Chronos here. Do I wanna bring the Chronos more than the Swords, man? That's a big question. This thing runs a Beagle Probe, the LRM, the Ultra Auto Cannon 5. You know what? I think this mech is going to be dumped at some point. So we're going to take Grandpa out. We're going to bring Belfagor in because he is the Kronos pilot. And I want to punch some people today. The way to, count to counteract enemy clan mechs is to just punch them in the face. Because they really like to engage at long range because they have like, pretty good targeting computers. They have good damage dealing weapons. But if you just go in and just kill them in one blow, then they cannot do anything against you, right? Right. Also, we're gonna get a good chunk of evasion out of that Kronos, and he can act as a frontliner. So, let's check it out, guys. Also, we have our Hetzer. That's our our little tank tank. So, the tank that tanks, the tank that's taking all the damage, and it's taking all the attraction from the enemies. I don't know why, but I like it. And honestly, it could be cool. Oh no, let's say it, it would be cool to know what the target priority of your enemies is. Like, why are they targeting the Hetzer so much? Is it because it's running the biggest weapons? Because of the Thunderbolt missiles? Like, how do they determine it? Because right now I feel like they are going against the target that brings the biggest pinpoint. And our dual Thunderbolt packs have 40 damage pinpoint each. So it's not really the, the biggest alpha strike, but um, kind of feels like it's like the biggest one hit that we can produce. The, like the biggest pinpoint damage, as I'm saying. Also, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands here. <laughs> So, I gotta keep a keen eye on that. So, at some point, I really want to bring a big gun, like a like an Autocannon 20 or something like that, the Gauss Rifle. And I want to see if they're going for that target then. And with that information, we can then build. We can build tanky tanks. We can build, like, really mechs that are supposed to attract fire and then build a lot of countermeasures into them, like ECM, like a, lots of AMS, something like that. Um, we have a plan then. So, we can build a dedicated tank. So, engine signatures. Bigger than I was expecting. No shit, Sherlock. This is what we are here for. So, I can already see myself picking mech parts and not equipment or money items. Oh, man. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna start here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Spread out a bit. And then we're gonna use this here as our cover point and we're gonna shoot into that general area. Look at that terrain. So, I see I Serrano. Ready to chuck All right. It's a chopper. We have another Serrano with one of the ballistics destroyed. I believe the ballistic is double Great. AMS, by the way. I get to choose so, those here. And this could also be like a barrage down. tag or an arrow tag or a laser AMS on top of two regular ones. On As I was saying, heads up. Minimal Prime target. Alrighty. Also, if you want to engage, we're going to best take somebody that has night vision to actually get a vision on our enemies. And uh, sharing that sensor information with my friends here. Yeah. Alright. Turn 16. So what's it gonna be? Turn 15 as well. So they have some mediocre, like right in the middle initiative there. 
Yeah, okay, let's take that. Mm, I'm not setting up in the forest. Oh crap, there they are. <laughs> Found them. So, let's see. That's a Shadowhawk 2C, and that's a valley. I don't know what the valley is. We have a decent hit chance against the Arctic Fox. And I think it's the one with the Gauss Rifle. And I think I'm gonna try to hit him. Let's go. So, LK ammo on the Stormcrow. Let's do it, by the way. Overloading the AMS. Super important. We can still do that while we are firing. So, when you forget, just click that button real quick. Receiving you. Uh, Kronos. Sure. Let's go. Let's go. Fire. It's imperative that we're gonna try to take the little one out as quickly as possible. And here comes the LBX Stormcrow. Moving fast. And I do believe it's good to shoot a cluster here for the highest hit chance. And we're gonna shoot it after the medium lasers has been fired. Sweet. Not quite. Commander? Got some SRMC here, which are sadly not able to get into line of sight, but that's okay. And you're done. Good to go. Hmm. And then it's our Hetzer. That should probably not shoot any of the, the Thunderbolt packs yet. Now we're just gonna pepper him with some Lurms. Alright, that's fine. So, now the first real round is gonna happen. Actually... What? I'm so happy that I got my AMS on Overload. That was... What was it? A Thunderbolt? An arrow? We're gonna take that carry out. <laughs> Alrighty. So, here we go. Oh, this is perfect. The Uziel is probably able to kill this thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on! No. No, not yet. Ah, we are playing Attack uh, <laughs> Attack of Titan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, so there is gonna be a secondary Lance coming down. And I'm gonna move over here, try to get that thing. You know, just killing it. And it was an LBX. Good to know. Oh, by the way, we have some Shadowhawk parts. We might want to try to finish that thing. Yeah, it's a freaking arrow. We gotta take it down. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Alright. So, it is a regular tag. It's just a tag tag. Nothing crazy here. And I see double AMS and ER large laser Blankenburg. A very German name there. Commander. Hmm. Crow. Yeah. I mean, Roger. yeah. Absolutely. Kill! Super important to take the arrow. That Enemy thing could be devastating for our max. But now it is time for the second helicopter to come down. Funnily enough, they also are damaged already. So they are not in perfect state. They are in very poor shape in terms of maintenance. Um, I'm just hoping that they continue trying to go for the headser. And I'm hoping that we can actually punch Mr. Mr. Hawk here. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. We're gonna try to go for hot seat. It's not quite there. Hmm. That's not good. That is actually quite bad. We can just get five evasion and shoot him with the flamers. Maybe that's the thing that we're gonna be doing. And you know what? We're gonna get five evasion and cover. Yeah, it's fine. So, he is a tank, he is something that can attract fire. Because it's a very defensive position right now, and we will shoot everything. Hit chance is good enough, it's like one third. We even have a headshot. Receiving ah. you. <laughs> okay. You know what? With the headshot done... I mean, this is gonna be a no-brainer, we're gonna move forward. But... We have a 20% chance on dead fire, we have a 32% chance on standard ammo. I think it's dead fire here. Let's go. Let's deal a good chunk of damage. He's now also unsettled. Love it. Alright. So, sprinting for three evasion and we're gonna start shooting the helicopters out of the sky. That makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. Unless they have so much armor that we can't. Hmm. Interesting. So it is now turn of the Shadowhawk, and thanks to the head injury from earlier, um, he is now in, in low initiative no matter what, like all the time. Um, my plan, by the way, is to take out these guys quickly, um, and then let the enemies drop down. The enemies will then take one turn of positioning themselves, not shooting yet, and then the next round will start with them being actually engaged. Um, you could also play it very defensively, waiting for those two parties to fight 
each other and then get the stuff that's or deal with the stuff that's left over um but since i want to play two missions today that's a far jump since i want to play two missions today i think it's just a good idea to just do what i just said you know just being quick about the missions that my friends almost crazy i could also drop a minefield in the hostile drop zone which I think I'm gonna do. I mean, 27 is not too bad for a Thunderbolt drop here on the flyer. It will most likely kill it. I like like the idea of dropping mines. <laughs> oh no, what are we gonna do? I, I think I'm gonna drop the minefield. Let's do it. So, mine dispenser, gonna go down here, attack the ground like that. Confirm! That's gonna be a nice and warm welcome for them. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> and we have the Hetzer in the spot where it's probably gonna attract a lot of fire and. There they are. So, let's see what they got. Okay, we got a a light flamer carrier with heavy flamers and a lot of them. A mine layer truck with a lot of mines. Oh no. Oh no. Don't drop anything, please. Of course, we have the flyers shooting. And, um, I mean, my Kronos is now in a pretty awkward spot where it cannot really go in there and uh, punch people or kick people. But we can go back and hit the Shadowhawk, or we just use the Flamers and, you know, the LRMs that we have to do things. Here comes the Cyrano. Heads are being the tank. It's the MVP in my lands currently. I don't want to give it up at all. It really prevents a lot of repair costs for us. So, alrighty, it's turn 20. It's time for Mr. Singer to do things. I think it's a medium laser and two machine guns that he's running there. Or maybe a medium pulse. I'm not sure of the 3R. So Stingers, they don't have much, but they have a little bit. You know, something. And I just hope that he's moving and not jumping. Come on, Stinger. Oh, he is moving. And he shouldn't shoot. No, no, that's the thing that people do when they come down with the dropship in, uh, like, this red landing zone. Receiving you. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Oh, we're gonna move back. We're gonna char- Oh, punch. Punch him. And we will try to shoot the stuff that makes sense here. Actually, yeah, so it's going to be a punch at 32% hit chance. That's nothing. 29, 38. Attacker takes 23 damage and 100 instability. I don't like that. No, we're going to go for the punch. It's a, it's a bit of a gamble. I hope that we can just ooh, make him unsteady and get him out of his crazy... What? Crazy uh, evasion. Hit him in the head. Wow. Look at that. We need more damage on the punch, guys, because that's going to be so helpful. Yeah. Alrighty. So, I want to take now... I take, 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 take the helicopters. Sure, let's do that. Yeah. Alright. So, here we go. One is down. Pow. And since he got the that's second one, headshot, what are we gonna do with him now? Oh man, that's that's interesting. Are we going for the stinger already? I mean, we could. Those guys, again, they want to take one turn of time doing nothing. Or I'll keep shooting what makes sense. Let's and that go. is this guy which has not moved yet. And it's gonna be a dead fire shot because we can. Fire. That's so much damage, it's crazy. <laughs> Alright. Oh guys, I think we are really getting there and we are getting good stuff out of this. Unless we kind of go for overkill. I do like this Shadowhawk. It's running a bunch of heavy lasers, micro pulses, and an LRM-10. Okay. So the Wasp didn't really move. Ah, he wanted to, but then he was stopped by the mines. Because as soon as you get internal lag damage, mech doesn't move anymore. Wow. Crazy. Good to go. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's what we're going to be doing now. Do we try to shoot me here? God, this is difficult. Um, all right, I'm gonna do one thing: sprinting behind him. Roger. Uh, we need like just that, knocking him down, stressing him, obviously, and that's the kill, right? He should have gotten another headshot, head injury. Wait a second. We hit him twice in the cockpit, and then he knocked down. Mm, that's weird. Ready for that is very, very weird. But it's okay, cause this is gonna be a stand and shoot. I mean, no. seriously, it's still standing mech, basically still standing mech, getting shot by two Thunderbolts. Easy. I wish I had Infernos here. 
which we have, but on a Stormcrow that has already done its thing. Which means we, we gotta deal with him now, and I'm gonna go for his head. We're not shooting dead fire, it's gonna be standard ammo, and I think we'll shoot like three, like two. Let's go. He's just panicked. No! I wanted him to punch out or get another headshot, so he's gonna get another turn. I don't think that he's gonna do anything though. Let's see. So, mister, it's your turn. One more shot. Take it. Make it count. He can technically go in the back of our Chronos. He has big jump capacity, guys. That's it. And, um, honestly, I would like him to jump because that means that I can try to knock him down once more, keeping the whole mech kind of safe. Come on, generate stability problems. Get completely wrecked by our AMS. It was such a good choice taking that thing. And now he is at a, at a bar of two. I mean, that's good. So, Stinger. I heard a rumor that you want to get punched in the face. Correct? Well, let's go. Moving to position. Can we? Nice center torso. 12 damage is left and he exploded. That was his cockpit. What? Pilot incapacitated. Tango we just punched down. right through his face, man. Kind of like, 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 breaching through his cockpit, ripping out the pilot, looking at it, and then crushing him. <laughs> cool. I love it, man. I love it. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That is very nice. Don't really want to engage the left side. Can we get in his back? Wait, no. The right side, sorry. So we can engage from the front. I guess I'll do it. Double time. Let's go. Hello. And we will shoot Infernos. Let's go, let's preserve some uh, salvage. And we hit him in the head. We hit him in the head, and that's his death. Tango down. Bam, down he goes. Pilot incapacitated. Receive. See, you just needed that one instance of tiny damage, because it doesn't matter how much damage you deal to the pilot, as long as it's getting one, um, they're dead now. Beautiful. Copy that. So, that is salvage, everybody. Let's drop the mind dispenser as much as possible, Here as quickly as possible. Because he can really mess with my mechs. My armor is getting ripped off. And my Kronos is getting shot in the back. <clears throat> Alright. Well then. I copy. Heavy flamers. Nah, I don't care so much about the flamers. I care about that guy. Because he is he's re really nasty. He could be really nasty. I mean, we can counteract it by not moving technically. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm going for the heads anyway. Whee! Alright! Lose an armor left. I'm under heavy fire. Very nicely done, but you're dead now. And that is how we go home. Very quick mission. Reporting. Um, I would say, I, I want to say it was easy, but it was successful. actually not. I think we, we just did the right thing here. Like the, the the turn order was correct, was absolutely right, and therefore also we got a bit, bit lucky with the with the whole head punches there. <laughs> that was amazing. So, 200,000 C builds, very easily acquired, and on top of it, we have the ability to take the light flame carrier. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's cool. It, it's really cool. I mean, it's hot, but uh, you get what I mean. It's a good tank, really. Um, ah, uh, yes, it was the Shadowhawk 45 toner. For that reason, I think I'm not gonna take it even. And I think I made the same decision uh, in a former episode. No, what do we take instead? We could take an arrow. No, we're not doing that. Your ER clan laser. Lots of heavy flamers, obviously. Clan LRM-10. Technically a good weapon. I don't want to go too LRM heavy, though, because we already have the equipment for the Stalker, and that's going to be my support missile bow. The other guys should be a bit more direct and uh, more burst damage-like. Micropulse laser. No, mine dispensers. I really want to do it at one point, just bringing... All the mines. Like like all of them. Just mines on every single mech and tank. But this is not good. Not yet. Beagle probe? No. Endosteel clan. We have two, so we don't need any. Bunch of engines. There's an XL. I think this is gonna be a money grab. And the exchanger, of course. Yes. Guys, look at that. Clan XL engine, four and a half million. Regular XL, two and a half. And we have three IC engines. Uh, makes us, uh, yeah, 750,000 C builds. Fire control system standard. Now nah, we are beyond that. Mm, clan Pharaoh, we have enough. Clan mm, ECM is good. Now, what about that? 
It's a three and a half million Siebel catch, so it's always better than the XL engine. We might also want to take it. Sure. Oh, by the way, and somebody said I could double click. Ah, all right. So thank you. Thank you, community. Thank you for leaving some comments down below. I can still learn things. Um, structure, sensors, sure. I don't care. Lots of ammo. That's good. Inferno arrows. Love it. But no, you know what? This is exactly what we wanted. And we're also gonna get some additional goodies on top of it by random salvage. So let's check it out. One part of an arctic fox. We get a part of a valley. The valley was the arrow carrier. Uh, we have a wasp. We have the arrow 4. Okay. We are not really able to run it properly. But it has some value. It really carries some value. ER laser Blankenburg. Those guys have a critical hit chance bonus as well as a weapon damage variation of 10. It's cool. Yeah. I kind of like it. Maybe we're gonna keep it around. We get the patch of um, the pack of mines here. Good. We also have uh, the core. We have the XL that's gonna get uh, just sold. Plant fire standard control system. Sure. SLDF. Oh, with night vision. That's really good. Some improved jump jets, which are actually worth a lot. Look at that. We have seven of them. That's a big stack. So if you do that, bam, 100,000 sea bills. Basic sensors for the value. Primitive. Standard fusion engine, by the way, is also worth a bit. So 800,000. Thank you very much. And we even have ammo for the arrow. So again, we could technically run it. And I want to, but I think I'm not going to do it. However, with the value that we got out of the mission here was exactly what we were looking for. We are able to upgrade our Argo by a big margin. We can now afford the next mech bay with uh, the stuff that we have here. And we might... Oh, do we go for the third mech bay or do we prioritize now the, the drop upgrade? I think, I think, you know, we're gonna do that. Because currently we have a stalker in the making. And we also have the Swordsman that is currently not part of the team. So those two can be added easily and can bring so much more value. I mean, financial report is a thing. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do it. So let's go to the store. Let's keep in mind, guys. The Stalker needs an XL engine upgrade. So we're gonna keep one of them. But I want to quickly go like all the way down to see what we can sell that is uh, that's valuable. Like that engine core here. Let's get rid of it. 225. Let's get rid of it. 240. I don't care. Sell it. Yes, thank you. We have a bunch of engine heat sinks and they are quite good. And we have three Klein XL engines. I'm not gonna sell eh, one of them. I think I want to keep two around. So one goes to the Stalker. And then we have one for another mech that might come up. And with that, we almost have enough to actually run the, the upgrade here. So what we need is just a bit more. Like this. Uh, I'd say with Pharaoh clan, uh, clan Pharaoh fibers lying around, we don't care about Inner Sphere Pharaoh anymore. Two clan double heat sinks kits. Hard to run because we only have two extra clan heat sinks. Um, but we can get rid of one of them. Yes, definitely. Those mechanicals. Mm, I don't know. We might want to put it into the stock and see how much it actually takes. Could be good. Could be actually quite usable. <sighs> Peel and stick. Let's let's just get rid of it. Um, proto heat sinks, always good later on. Plant sensors are fine. Speedy actuator. More walking distance. It's good for slower max to actually give it a bit more. A little bit, but it weighs a tenth of the chassis tonnage. So if we have a 75 ton stalker, it weighs 7.5 tons. And we could actually just bring a bigger engine. So we're gonna get rid of that as well. Alright. Quick cell engine. I don't know. It looks interesting. It gives you a negative walk distance, but negative 40% heat generated by any weapons fire. So that thing, combined with jump jets, like mechanical jump jets, it just hops. It doesn't move anymore. It just hops around and shoots because the mechanicals also don't generate heat. I think that could be something. So we're going to keep that thing. 220, uh, sorry, 250 is good. Um, same principle here. Going to sell regular endosteel for the benefit of having clan endosteel. Compacts. Nah, no, 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 no. They're only cool for three, so might as well just sell them. Ultra Auto Cannon 10, Ultra Auto Cannon 20. Gonna keep those bad boys. We have some SRM streaks. We are... Oh, wait. Are we? Let me think. Yes, we are beyond that. We are not using streaks anymore. And they carry a lot of value. I want to bring some plasma at some point. Machine guns. Man, I don't know. I always keep machine guns until I say, yeah, we are beyond machine guns. Medium Pulse is good. LRM 15. We have three Clan 15s. I don't know. We're gonna sell the fives at the very least. 
And a light AC5 can also go. You know what? We have enough money now. That means... I'm gonna keep my arrow, okay? That means we're gonna go for engineering. And we're gonna upgrade the drop size now for two and a half or two point... Uh, two and a quarter million seabills. And it also gives us a tech point, which is quite nice. And we even have enough money. Alright. So, Argo upgrade complete. Now, in order to get it running, we need to go back to engineering and we need to get the... the, the control... Here we go. Repaired mech bay. Ah, wait. No, that, that's how it works. That is a plus one mech or tank. And it costs 400,000. Sure. And it's done in six days. Which is basically our repair time. So, super good. Stalker is also ready in nine days. Let's get over the financial report. And I do believe... Um, it's a good idea to actually play another, like, quick mission. Hashtag quick mission. You know what I mean. And, and get some more stuff here. Ideally, against the clans. And after we are done with that... Ah, uh, now we're passing that. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna happen. Not gonna go to Solaris here. So, with that now, we can bring more mechs to the battlefield. And I love it. Alrighty, guys. Let's get to the barracks. Because uh, I want to quickly see if there's something that we can upgrade. Very quick look here. You're gonna get that. Perfect. Um, and it's really cool that we're getting more and more... Uh, accuracy and more and more stuff that we can bring um, in terms of, um, you know, our skill set. Nothing crazy. No. Moloch. Uh, no. Morphium. Morph. I need some sensor lock people, so you're gonna be one of them. Shotgun. It's fine. He wants the, the thing here, the warlord skill, probably. Skyros. Definitely pushing towards tactics, because, again, sensor lock is gonna be more and more interesting and more and more important later on and then there are the other guys alrighty so hashtag quick, quick mission we're gonna get into the command center and I want to see if I can play against the clans again no matter the mission type ooh ooh there are some interesting ones the fan base too long too long battle yeah fine we're gonna drop here all right and that should give us the opportunity to drop one additional Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is how it goes now. The mech goes here. We're gonna bring Grandpa in. Sure, why not? And then the tanks, the carrier here, heads are here. Gonna take shotgun on the heads and Skyros on the light carrier. And we're good to go. Bam! One additional mech is gonna be such a big power spike. Because we have now more opportunities to, to not only bring just DPS or DPR damage per round. But also the opportunity to snatch a kill and take out firepower. Um, you know, before they can act again. That's really good. So the ability to take out enemies, to finish the job, is so important. Sometimes you leave an enemy open, like you have him, uh, the armor shred off, but they still have all their fighting capacity. And with more, let's say, instances of damage, um, you can react better. You have more opportunities to, to shift your plan. So when it's not enough to kill one guy, then you just take another mech and just finish the job there. Instead of having only like, like two shots uh, the whole round. So I like this whole um, normalization of damage. So you have like uh, more reaction, more reaction time, more reaction opportunities. So information is ammunition unless you got your information from Darius, in which case information is shite. <laughs> You're right. So let's take a look. So we are playing against the Greater Valkyrid and I don't know, the Greater Valkyrie, they're kind of like pirate associated, right? They are... They have an affinity for them, or are they even pirates? I don't know. They're probably gonna bring some wacky stuff to the table. And uh, maybe we can get some interesting stuff out of here. So keep in mind, guys, we are playing two skulls. Our lands value is two and a half already. So we are basically beyond that. And with the additional mech bait that we're gonna get on top of that, I also... Um, again, we're gonna bring the Stalker and then we're gonna instantly go for the three skull missions to accelerate our game plan. Finding more heavy mechs. That's the idea here. But first of all, we gotta get into this mission here. It's taking a while. I hope the game didn't crash. Ah, there we go. So, let's see. Ah, quick mission. Destroy the Valkyrian and an unknown hostile lands. Okay. I really hope they don't have any reinforcements. <laughs> well, let's take it out. I mean, again, they are two skull, and we have our secret weapon, the Hetzer. 
It's gonna be fine. Let me see. We've been tracking Valkyrian lands moving through contested area, blah blah blah. A few hours ago, our scouts reported another lands, unknown allegiance, on an interception course. So they will probably fight each other and we're gonna be in the middle of it. I can work with that. Alrighty. So I can drop like here, here, or here. So they are right in the middle. Hmm. I want to have I want to have direct engagement, so we will drop like here. Ah, this might be a bad spot, so I'm gonna take that back. This, this, this. I don't want to end up on the mountain not being able to move anymore. That's very important here. Alrighty. So. Time to earn our pay. The Valkyries are here, and I see a scout. An our scout. What's that? It's an urban mech. Oh, never mind. And as per usual, we're just gonna reserve everything. Ah, nice. Herbie coming towards us. It's an R60. That was an AC10, I believe. So what else do they have? I think my battle plan here is bringing my Kronos in as quickly as possible. Just activating the supercharger, uh, no, the, the hot seat cockpit, and just running to the front line, getting an overview of what we have, and then we're gonna react to that. There was lots of movement in turn 16. It took a while. Or lots of thinking, at the very least. There might have been a tank with a lot of movement that was thinking about where to go. Alright. So. Ah, look at that. Owens, Hunchback. Ooh, Hachi. Energy Hunchback, huh? Yeah, we can possibly try to get that thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna drop some acid here, correct? Yeah. Especially since we are attacking him from his right side, so I think it's a, what is it, 4P? The one with the energy weapons. Stormcrow is not really able to follow up. It's a bit of a shame, so it only has the target uh, in front of him. And I could shoot the Hunchback, but obstructed line of sight is not good here. No, no, no. Copy that. So we try to hit Irby because it's rather easy to kill. Uh, Hetza, of course, let's do it. All in I'm gonna shoot everything except for the mines. The shot. Nice. Side tours are open. Ready for orders. Stormcrow number two. Yeah, I don't know, man. Guess we're gonna go Probably for Irby. Bad. Or are we? Yeah, we will try to kill Irby right quick. And we got him. Nice. That was a medium rifle. Got it. Standing by. So, and then again, as I was saying, there's the Kronos, but we can use the supercharger, uh, sorry, the hot seat cockpit next round. There's no need for going in like that right now. And then again, we're gonna stick to the plan, trying to get the Hunchback as a priority target. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? What do you want? I want you to go in, oh, Grandpa. Like Let's do it. It's scary. I'm gonna press all the buttons and you Not great, but me. okay. Good to go. And then there's also Skyros. Holy crap, we have so much firepower here. Uh, I think, but Skyros is not gonna shoot yet. The the hit chance was not great, and we would probably uh, hit each other in the back. Receiving you. All right. Anyway, uh, that's that's a no-brainer. That's a dead Owens. That's what it is. Goodbye. And I'm attacking the Owens here because it has a higher initiative than the Hunchback, and I'm just hoping that. I mean, first of all, we can kill it in one go, and the Hunchback is already open from the side, and we can follow up. Oh, God, like that. What do you want? A Bushranger. It's too late for that now. You're I really liked the Bushranger early on, but right now, we're not doing it anymore. Very nice. Ready for orders. <laughs> um, sure, Kronos, go in. We're gonna punch him. And uh, we don't even need to supercharge. Uh, sorry, the, I'm always saying supercharger, but I mean the hot seat cockpit. No, we will do it like that. On jump. Arm down. Knock down. And maybe even full mech down with the follow up damage. No, it's not. But you know what? We, he lost all of the firepower. So, what he has is a small laser on his head and a medium laser on the left arm. It's nothing left. Orders. What about that guy? So, hit chance is not the best. Maybe we just let him come closer. Yeah, you know what? Let's do exactly that. We will wait. And I have an idea what I'm gonna do with my headsaw already. <laughs> so, the ranger. 
He's even hitting his friend, so that's good. Damage. Man. Commander? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So how do we get there? Uh, I need to be able to fire on the ground. I think I can do it from here. So, uh, attack ground, like this, uh, please. We are not shooting the Thunderbolts. It's only the mines. I'm super excited. Sadly, we misplaced it a bit. So, there was a bit of a, a scatter. Standing by. Um, but that's okay. It's fine. Moving out. So, Mr. Hanshi, I would say you are dead now. Time to unload. And he ex... Um, how to say it? Order. What's the word? <laughs> he left his cockpit. He ejected. That was the name. Um... Bu -bum -bu -bum. Sure. Let's go down here. Consider me there. Say hello to this guy. Um, I mean, it's a 32 chance to 29% chance we take dead fire. Just for the higher damage output. And sadly, we couldn't make him unsteady yet. But we still have our friend here. The Stormcrow. Which is actually able to get into his bag. Mm, it's beautiful because we also have mm, dead fire, which is not worth it. So let's go LK. Unsteady now. And if we have high initiative, then we can easily kill him. So, secondary lands. That seems big. It's just a crab though. Let me see. So, we have a crab here. We have a dragonfly viper. Cool. The Kallis and the Bradford. Oh, okay. So those tanks are scary. Right. Receiving you. Do we run over our, our own mines? No, we don't, because those guys won't do anything. It's fine. Red we don't need four. to care about that. Um, what we do though is this time we're gonna enable hot seat. And now we are able to move fast enough to actually get an attack in. Which is gonna be a charge attack. I don't care. Okay. He's gonna die anyway. Locked on for physical attack. Right? Yeah, look at that. I mean, he's on the ground. He's got a lot of damage. He's down to two health. Um, and we lost all evasion. So, Good to go. that's okay. And with that being said, I believe the next few attacks that we're gonna bring are against those guys. Got something you want done? Unless it's somebody that is already here. So, we're gonna move here. We're gonna say hi. And now, this time, it's time for the dead fire. We go for... Uh, I don't know. Is that thing interesting? Does it have something that's worth taking? I'll aim for center. I want to get out of here quickly. Also, AMS Mark II. Too late. Funny thing about the Bush Ranger is though that it is actually quite sturdy, as you can see. So we dropped just a lot of dead fire SRMs on his center. Of course, it's spread to the legs and the sides as well, but it's still alive. Oh God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Jammed autocannon, so Gramps doesn't have that big of an impact uh, in terms of um, Alpha Strike, but he might be uh, enough to get this guy out. And that's what we needed. This is what I mean. He wasn't really able to kind of crack uh, enemy's armor open, but it was enough damage to not bother with that guy anymore. So it's perfect. Ready for orders. Yeah, let's go. Copy that. That's a pirate viper coming in with bolt on tandem rockets, a minigun, medium VSPL, and small X pulse lasers. Alright. I mean, he's open on the arm. Heavy rifle SRM. Cool. Crab is running through all the mines. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder why. He also has a uh, bulwark and he's also entrenched, so he's taking 50% less damage, uh, stability damage and. Um, also less regular damage now. 40%. No, 60%, I think. Same thing. The hit chance is very marginal. The, the difference between the hit chances is very marginal. So we're going to go for the stuff that has the higher damage output. Cool. Hey there. Pulling back a bit. Or can we stand it? No, we have to pull back a little bit. Uh, we even get two evasion. That's good. 39%? Yeah, good enough for me. Hey, and we even hit him. Nice. What's up, boss? I'd say we're gonna stay on the same target here. Ah, oh, let's go. Hello, mister. I'm gonna shoot a cluster shot on you. And we got him. So, Viper down. 
Uh, all of the enemies in the first lands down. Now we have to deal with two tanks and a crab. Great. Oh, the mind damage is beautiful. But here is the Bradford. The Bradford has usually one big weapon. This time it's a Thunderbolt 15. Therefore, I was a bit afraid of him. The funny thing is that we can charge the crab. Crab has a high initiative though. So what's going to be our follow-up? Standing by. I think it's fine. Your chance is 70%. I'll take it. Let's go. Because we have some follow-up on top of that. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that, that, I mean, look at this crap. He's not gonna do anything anymore. The only thing that we don't have is, again, evasion. But uh, I think it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Let's check it out. So, he's gonna die now. Goodbye, Mr. Krabs. I think I'm gonna shoot LK here. This is all about the criticals, not so much about the structural damage. And we got him. It was a double heatsink kit that got destroyed. And the engine, so most parts of the crab are still there. And, and then we have the grams. Alrighty. Oh, I don't like going fast. It's scary. Very good damage. Lots of damage front loaded. Um sure. Yeah, let's go in with our actually quite well hitting Uziel. I expect a kill here. Which we didn't get. We have the crew compartment crit though. And I don't know why and when it happens. But sometimes the crew compartment crit means that tank is destroyed and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if you have to get three crits on the crew or more. Don't know. I love that. So good. So he dropped his grenade with a flare and um, of course the Thunderbolt missile. But he wasn't able to kill. And he was going for the Hetzer, obviously. Anyway, again, front attack. Shouldn't have shot everything, by the way. There's a chance that ammo blows up. And you know what? We're gonna play this little game where the tanks are shooting each other at range over a hill. Yeah, we got one out. What's up, boss? Mines, though. It's a carrier. The carrier can take it. No problem. We can actually use it as a mine clearer. Commander. So. Um, Stormcrow. Uh, cannot really do anything. We can shoot one SRM-6 over the hill. And far away. We can just eat 11 mines. I mean, we definitely turn off the hot seed. That's that, right? Um, how, can we avoid though? No, we can just move over them. I will do it. I just want to get out of this mission. We have seven mines exploded. Damage is minor. We're gonna just kill this thing. Okay. It's not the optimal way to play it, but it's definitely it's one way to play it, and it's a fast one. Uziel runs over one mine. Yeah, whatever. Let's uh, go for it, no. and let's go home. There was actually a chance if I would let him have another move that one of his missiles, actually the Thunderbolt 15, hitting me in return. So it was a bit of risk management here. Also, I, I got, I wanted to get out of the mission. Um, but yeah, that um, the Thunderbolt 15, if that thing hit, it would have been a bad time for us. So instead, we're going to just take the mine damage and clear the enemy before they can shoot again. We got 200,000 C builds out of it. We also got very little damage on our max. And we got some salvage, so let's check it out. Two parts of a Bradford, we got four parts of a Bush Ranger. Could be worth it. We could get it and then salvage the crap out of this thing. If it's in a good condition. And I mean, right now we have some tech points. That's not too bad. We have a Kallis. Kallis is not bad. Oh, actually, no, wait, that was the heavy rifle. We'll get that. Urban Mech, the Viper, nah. So we're going to go into the equipment section of all of this. And if we don't find anything good, I'm actually taking the Bush Ranger and just, you know, take it apart. This is good. Gives us accuracy. No, wait, this is the range one. Never mind. Ah, VSPL is very situational. I'm not going to take it. Narc Launcher, Small X-Pulse, Tag Barrage. We are beyond that. This is also not really useful. Gives us injury resistant guts. Yeah, and armor to the cockpit, which is okay, but not needed. ECM, no. No, no, big nope. Glazed clan armor. Now we're talking. So, let's take a look. Negative 12% armor weight. Not bad. Resistant to energy based attacks and uh, negative resistant to ballistic and missile attacks. Missile attacks we can counter with AMS, ballistics not so much. Mm, I don't know. 
takes 10 slots. It's fixed slots on top of it. It's not dynamic, so I don't like that. We can think about the hatchet here. We need a bigger mech to carry it, though. I'll take the hatchet. Yeah, it's a good item for later. Lots of single heat sinks. Patchwork, Mechanicals 3, we already have them. Reinforced uh, structure, Sentinel sensors. Yet again, not too crazy. Not too crazy. I'm gonna take... Where did the hatchet come from, by the way? Who carried it? The cr crab, maybe? Might be. I don't know. No, you know what? I'm gonna take the bush ranger. So, let's take all the parts of it and try to get something out of it. Right, so we got four parts of a bush ranger. We get one part of a crab, one part of a hunchback, another part of a hunchback, and Owens... A grenade launcher is actually quite an interesting thing. It only takes one slot and one turn. It has higher accuracy. And you can load some specialist mortar ammo in it and have a good time dropping acid on your enemies, getting them illuminated or stuff like that. We also got the medium laser diverse optics. It's a good one. An MML7. Sure. A Thunderbolt 15. Nice. The combat shield. ECM. A core. What? The sentinel sensor. Primitive can go though. Rifle can... You know, ammo doesn't, doesn't matter so much. Guys, that was actually quite good. We're gonna build that uh, bush ranger, but that's gonna happen in the next episode. So guys, I'm looking forward for next day. I hope you enjoyed this one though, and if you did, as always, don't forget to leave a rating, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.